I am Brother Matthew. Thank you for tuning in once again. He will lift up Jesus Delivered by our General Superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoye. the also and the finisher of our faith and then where he steps to step where he goes she go what he says you say how he relates with people relate with people like that moment by moment the lord will help us we're looking at first john chapter 2 verse 6 first john chapter 2 verse 6 he that says he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walks once again the lord is telling us not to give an excuse and and not to gloss over our faults yes there are faults there are shortcomings the lord is just telling us you're not finished the building yet as you come to this conference you're not going to oh leave me the way i am i know that's my fault i know that's my problem i know that's that's my shortcoming just leave me the way i am god doesn't want to leave you the way you are he wants you to look at the pattern and say how can i build up this life what prayer can i pray during this conference and what consecration commitment can i make to the lord during this conference so that i'll be more and more like the divine pattern the lord jesus christ whom the lord has shown me you have problem loving people that's an area you need to go back to god and say god i'm different from divine pattern in this area do you have any problem living a life according to the commandments of the word of god hey, it's not something you need to take to the lord during this conference and say lord Lord, this is an area I'm working on and you're going to help me you're going to work on me and something good will come out of that prayer in Jesus name the point is Jesus is the pattern as we come here we'll read to you and we'll show you the life of Christ the attitude of Christ the consecration commitment of Christ you don't want to excuse yourself and say I'm just a human being what do you expect of me what can I do this is the way I am you will not remain like that something is going to happen there'll be a growth there'll be a pressing on to higher ground and that higher ground you'll find jesus there and jesus will build up the image of christ in every one of us in jesus name in first peter chapter 2 verse 21 first peter chapter 2 verse 21 for even here unto were ye called this a calling because christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that we should follow what follow his steps follow his steps now look up here brothers and sisters sometimes you know at this conference were so many here you might find there's somebody and you know we're outside there and he's talking so rough and almost wanting to beat up the other fellow don't say, oh, if brother so-and-so can do that, I also can do it. Would that be right? You see our pattern? Here you find, uh, you know, his particular sister. And, you know, we're still growing. And, you know, we're not there yet, but we're getting there. I said we're getting there. You hear the word of God, and then you see somebody, his sister over there, and there she puts up a particular attitude. And then sometimes you'll say, okay, if sister so and so can be like that, I guess, what, what am I doing? Trying to grow and trying to go up higher. If sister so and so can do that, I also can do it. I say, no. Is she the pattern? No. If sister so and so is not like Christ, why will you allow sister so and so to be your pattern? Christ is the pattern. And that's the reason we have come here that God will remold our lives. He will reshape our lives. And whatever the shortcoming is, and whatever it is, the weakness in our lives, a brother, a sister, a young fellow there, a boy there, a girl there, we're going to all focus on Jesus, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And the Lord will do something. 
He'll do it in your life. And then he'll make you to be more and more conformed unto the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's number one. The features of the new life in Christ. Now, what's number two? Faith for new life in Christ. Uh, sometimes when you hear all these things that we're reading from the word of God, you say, is this possible? Is this possible? I'm looking at Enoch now, and Enoch says, I'm going home. I say, are you going home? I'm going to go home without seeing death. I say, is this possible? We say, yes, by faith. And then I look at Noah, and Noah, I say, Noah, what are you doing? He says, I'm building an ark. And because God told me there's going to be a rain. Have you seen rain before? No, I've never seen rain before. Have you seen flood before? I've never seen flood before. And there's going to be a flood that will swallow up the whole earth. How do you know that? And Noah said, it's by faith. And then I come to Abraham, and Abraham, God called him. I said, Abraham, do you know where you are going? Because God called him, and then he should go to a place which I will show you. Do you know the place? No, I don't know the place. What, do you, what are you doing? I'm just taking a step, and a step, and another step. I said, how can you do that when you don't know where you are going? And he says, by faith. And then I look at Sarah, and Sarah, I said, you look happy today. What's happening to you? And Sarah says, I'm expecting a baby. I said, at what age? Oh, she said, I'm just 89 years of age. 89. Do you feel normal like you were when you were 32? Not really. Are you expecting a baby? Oh, yes. I'm expecting a baby. In fact, I know the name of the baby already. I said, what? How could you do that? And Sarah said, by face. And Abraham got Isaac. And then God said, do something. And then Abraham was just going with the, boy, with the boy, and I saw the wood on the head of the boy. I said, Abraham, where are you going? Oh, he said, I'm going to over there. What are you going to do? See this, my boy? I'm going to sacrifice him. See this wood? I lay the wood there, I sacrifice him. And then, I said, then after that, what will happen? He said, the boy, I'll come back with the boy. I said, I don't understand. He said, you'll understand by, by faith. You see, when God shows us something in the Bible, all those people in Bible days, those things were incredible. Those things were unbelievable. And yet, by faith. That's what you read in Hebrews chapter 11. Everything God did and the challenge he gave to the people, they accepted and they knew they were going to live like that because of faith. And tonight your faith will grow. And the things that seem impossible unto you, here you are coming for the first time. You've never had anything like this. And I'm telling you tonight that when we pray, God will take your life, remodel your life, refashion your life, and then you'll pinch yourself and say, is this me? Because things are totally different now, because it's going to happen. And you ask me, you say, Pastor, how? And I say, by faith. That's what God is going to do. Whatever difficulties you have in your life, whatever shortcoming you have in your life, and whatever kind of moral aberration, whatever it is you have in your life, and you are wondering, can I ever change? Can things ever become better? Can I live a life that is pleasing unto God? I say from tonight, it will happen. Yeah. By faith, they did it. By faith, we're going to have it. That leads me to point number two, faith for new life in Christ. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 12, and I'm looking at verse 2. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. That is, you know that Jesus Christ is the author of the faith, is the originator of the faith, is the creator of the faith, is the producer of the faith. You know, sometimes the problems we have is, and I say, I cannot produce a face like that. God is not asking to produce a face like that. I cannot generate a face like that. God is not telling you to generate any face like that. I cannot manifest any face like that. God is not asking you to manifest any face like that. He says all you need to do is to look unto who? 
Jesus. And then he is a creator, the originator, and the author, and the finisher, the perfecter of the faith. And if you look unto Jesus tonight, you will not know he'll drop that faith inside you. And something will begin to say within you, now I know it's possible. I'm going to have a better life. I'm going to have a new life. I'm going to have a righteous life. The things I didn't believe before and the things I didn't know could ever take place before all of a sudden the conviction just dawned on me and I just know beyond any shadow of doubt I'm going to have a more righteous life than I ever had. And all those shortcomings I've been battling with, I've been struggling with, I've been saying, how will this be? How will this be? I just know, I'm just sure tonight it will be. Because I'm looking unto Jesus, the author, the originator, the creator of my faith, and the finisher and the perfecter of my faith. When I do that, what does that faith produce? I'm looking at if Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And we're looking at verse 8. For by faith, by grace, are you saved? through faith by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god what a revelation it's not something i work for it's not something i produce it's not some i generate it is something that god gives me as a gift now a gift is not something you earn a gift is not something that we give you because you're a good boy you're a good girl a gift is not something we give you because you paid so much money. A gift is something that the almighty God himself just drops in your life, in your heart. And he says, I give this to you. And there's no partiality with God. He will give us that gift. I said he will give us that gift. And by that gift, the salvation, the forgiveness, the new life, the faith, the grace, then we're able to live the life he wants us to live. Then we're looking at Romans chapter 1, verse 17. Romans chapter 1, verse 17. Romans 1, 17. Here it says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed. Then it says, from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Uh, would you look up for a moment? It says, hearing, hearing, inside here, hearing is the faith, is the righteousness of God revealed. I'm looking for the righteousness of God. Please, can you show me where to find the righteousness of God? I look to the sky. I can't see the righteousness of God there. I look to the sea. I don't see the righteousness of God. And he says, herein is the righteousness of God revealed. I said, if it is revealed, show me where it is. And then he points at you, herein inside him. Is the righteousness of God revealed? Then I look at you very as yes, what I didn't see in the sky, what I didn't see in the sea, I can see it there in you. I said I can see it there in you. Because herein inside here is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Immediately it says that's the just man. The just shall live by faith. When you come to the Lord, you are a sinner, condemned. And then you come to the tribunal of God, and you are justified. And you are forgiven. And you are pardoned. It takes all your sins away. The guilt is gone. You feel light. You feel happy. You know that something has happened. The body that was there before is gone. The condemnation that was there before is gone. And then you are rejoicing. The hatred you had in your heart before for so and so. I'll never forgive him. I'll never forget what he's done. All of a sudden you just find that there's love in your heart. The people you have been avoiding, running away from, you come to them. And it's like you just want to love everybody and see everybody. And then I say, this is right. What's righteousness? Love. Peace. Good relationship with people. 
and then wanting to just be like Jesus. And I see that he, and I, now I understand. Herein is the righteousness of God revealed. I'll see it in you. I said, I'll see it in you. Because the just shall live by faith. It's that faith that we manifest in Christ that gives us that righteousness. Remember, we're saved by faith, by grace through faith, and then we're justified also from faith unto faith. And then we're looking at Second Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. You know, if we were to walk by sight, there are many places we'll never go. Never. Moses, go to Pharaoh and tell him, let my people go. If we were to walk by, by sight, places we'll never go. Here is river, the Red Sea, before you. Tell the children of Israel to move on. If we were to walk by sight, the places will never go. Here is river Jordan overflowing its banks. And let the priest carry the ark of the Lord. He made the step on the shore. It will part. If you didn't believe that, the places will never go except by faith. Look at Goliath bragging and saying, choose a man for me. If I kill him, if I destroy him, then you'll be a servant. If he kills me, we will be your servants. And then Saul, the tallest and the highest and the mightiest of them all, he was trembling. He couldn't move, walking by side. And here comes little boy, teenager David. And I said, don't worry about him. I'll take him on. I'll finish him. That's walking by faith. If you want to walk by side... There are places you'll not go. There are things you'll, not, there are things you'll never think about. And there's a kind of life you'll never think you can live. When we talk about Enoch, he was a special guy. When we talk about Daniel, that was a special man. About Shadrach, Meshach, and Abed, that was special. There are things you'll never attempt if you're walking by sight. It is when you say, tonight I come by faith. That impossible thing, it will be done. That challenging life, I'm going to live that challenging life. I've been hearing people talk about holiness, holiness, and I've always just said that's their special, that's a special area for me. I know myself. I never think on that. I'm not going to deceive myself. I'm not, I'm not thinking about holiness. I'm not thinking about purity. I'm not thinking about this. If they talk about it, that's them. But tonight, now you think about it. Because now we're walking by faith and not by sight. If you find people, when they hear the word of God, and they say, that's impossible, who can do that? I don't think I can do that. They are walking by sight. Because when you walk by faith through you, God will accomplish something you never thought of in your life. And tonight is that night. I said, tonight is that night. Look at that woman. She's been sick for 12 years. And I see her. She's trying to get in the I said, woman, what's the matter with you? Pushing everybody and want to go. He said, tonight, 12 years problem is going to finish. I said, uh, how do you know? Because you've been getting worse and worse. Even though you spent all the money.